Dancing is standing by uh, with a new development out of uh, Cleveland. Chris, you're, you have the White House up director there. Yeah, we have the White House director of political strategy. David Seamus is the guy who's backstage here where we're having exclusive access before the president went out. He'll be on Air Force One with him. He was ripping a lot, David, on Donald Trump. What's in his head right now? Well, we've got 25 days left to make an argument. That isn't just about Democrats and Republicans. So when the president and the first lady go out, Chris, and so the context of all of the work that they put in for eight years and understanding the stakes that the American people are facing and what's on the ballot. So that's what you're hearing. You saying. hear that in a crafted way, the pro-Hillary. Here's the affirmative case for her. But it seemed like he was going on a bit off script about Donald Trump. And that's why I asked, like, what's in his head? What's motivating that? Well, again, Chris, it's, it's what he said. It's He's seen the American people for eight years. He's seen the decency and the goodness and the hard work and the way that at the end of the day, they're really people who turn to each other. And unfortunately, what you're hearing on the other side is just the opposite. But Trump's getting under his skin a little. No? Come on. No, no. I think with all the president of the United States has faced for the past eight years, uh, I think it's pretty fair to say that nothing gets under his skin. Did you notice what the biggest applause line was? It was when he said, David, for those of you who didn't have a chance to hear Michelle yesterday, I understand he watched her speech in the limousine. What was his reaction to her speech yesterday, which is getting, it's getting blowing up on social media? Complete pride. Um, because what you heard the first lady talk about yesterday was not politics. It wasn't Democrats and Republicans. It was human decency and goodness. And when she got up on that stage and basically said, I want to talk to you as women, as American people. And when she was articulating in, a, in an amazing way what women feel on a day-to-day -day basis, what men feel on a day-to-day -day basis, that's not blue team versus red team. And that's the quintessential Michelle Obama. And so the pride that he felt that you just heard about him? I heard he was fist pumping. Well, uh, those are state secrets I can't get into. <laughs> well, tell me about this. There's a little competitiveness. They joke about it. When I was at the White House last week, folks were saying, everyone thought you want to nudge the president. You remind him that her approval ratings are a little higher than his. But what's that like? Because you have two of these great political communicators working for one candidate. I don't know when we've ever seen this. Like behind the scenes with them, what state secrets can you share? Well, when it comes to comes to that, I can't divulge any state secrets. But but look, I you see when he talks about the first lady, when the first lady talks about the president, you you have a partnership that's developed over years and years, and what they've been through together as a family, as husband and wife, as parents over the past eight years is extraordinary and frankly Chris is someone who works for them. I gotta tell you the pride that I feel to just see the, the dignity and the elegance and the grace and the respect that they bring to their jobs and to each other is really inspiring. You became close to the president because you're the guy who knows the polls. You can micro look at every part of the country. You do the focus groups. You talk to the president about political strategy. That's your job. So talk to me about this, what we saw with Michelle Obama last night in Manchester. How does this play into the strategy to get Hillary Clinton reelected? Because it seems a little to some people like you're preaching to the choir. So the real key to any appearance by the president, the first lady, Vice President Biden, is less the coverage, and obviously thank you for it, but it's what happens here on the ground. How many volunteers come out of it? How many new email addresses come out of it? How many text information come out of it? Because you can be sure that Secretary Clinton's Ohio team today is going to turn the energy here into early vote. It's going to turn the energy into new shifts for volunteers. And that's what a good field organization does. At the end of the day, in a close race, 
if you have a good field, it's one or two or three points. And so that's the real strength of Michelle Obama in New Hampshire, Barack Obama in Ohio, and that's what you'll see them doing over the next three weeks. What we've heard from both of them and what we've heard from the Hillary campaign as well as Hillary Clinton herself is, we take nothing for granted. We're going to work every day from there. You never look at the polls three weeks out and say, oh, we got this. When I talk to senior members of the White House staff, they say, key to your value to the president is your detail. You know what's going on in the country. What keeps you up at night right now when you're thinking about wanting to get Hillary Clinton reelected? Well, so, you know, in any campaign, first of all, fundamentally, you have to run as if you're behind. You have to make sure that the infrastructure that you have, the turnout operation that you have, the message operation that you have is all aligned and in sync. And so, look, we're just beginning early voting right now, and I know that... Uh, what are the early trends telling you? So, there, look, there are numbers in places like North Carolina and Florida, which uh, Democratic turnout is outperforming anything that you saw in 2012 and in 2008. That is a function of organization. That's so what keeps you up at night? What are you so worried about? I, you know, again, I worry about everything, Chris. It's, it's I, I have to worry. But and more so, specifically? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not going to share uh, specifically what I worry about. Ohio. Let's talk really quickly in our last 30 seconds about Ohio. Yeah. Talk to both the Democratic and Republican Party chair. They both say it's dead even. What are you going to be watching over the next couple of weeks here? Yeah, so early vote. Uh, where it's coming from, uh, how does it compare to past cycles, and then the two campaigns, if they're doing a good job, are going to look to see if the people who are voting are new or they're simply people who are going to vote on November 8th anyhow and simply are doing it earlier. That's the data that both campaigns need to look at and will be back. All right. David Seamus, thank you so good much. Good to see you, Chris. Appreciate Welcome it. home. Thank you so much. That is the uh, presence director of the Office of Political Strategy and Outreach. I can also tell you, talking to folks on the ground here, they are keeping their fingers crossed. They hope and believe that Michelle Obama will also come here sometime between now and Election Day. And they see the power of what she can do in terms of not just ratcheting up the base, but getting people out there to volunteer, do that ground game. We're going to talk to David Seamus and have more for you with him a little later on today on MSNBC. And Chris, when you see the reaction from the crowd again just today, I heard you talking early about your working class neighborhood, your father had always supported the Democratic Party. Going back there now, the contrast to the event you are at and the battle for those voters in your old neighborhood. Yeah, I, so I, 35 miles east of here is where I grew up. My father was a factory worker. I, I'm going to drive the control room crazy. David, your parents were also factory workers, as my dad was. When I talk to them, when I go back to my hometown, which was heavily Democratic, heavily union, I'm telling you, there are so many Trump signs in those, in those yards that I would never have seen before. How do you convince them strategically that they should not vote for Donald Trump? So, you know, the argument that Secretary Clinton is going to be making in the final couple of weeks is about the same values that they care about, right? It's about hard work. It's about honesty. It's about not taking shortcuts. It's about doing things the right way and committing your entire life to that rather than being committed to something entirely different. David Seamus, we're out of time. We're going to talk to you more. Have it later today. Thank you so much. Uh, Tamron, back to you. All right, Chris, thank you. Great job. Thank you for watching. All hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.